Hi there and welcome back. Now, one of the things I like to do is watching others create music. How others put melodies and harmonies together, for instance. Many people do, however, create their music directly in their door. I do it myself rather than composing into notation software or, dare I say it, using good old fashioned manuscript paper and a pencil. Many YouTube videos feature individuals writing directly into their door and don't show what they're actually writing. They show a screen showing data entry, MIDI data entry, creating individual tracks and an occasional shot of hand on a keyboard if they can see it for all the paper. So to try and amend this, I want to show you how I have put some of my orchestral works together and to illustrate what I'm doing by showing the fully orchestrated page. So if you're like me and compose directly in your door sometimes, the only way to get it notated is then to export your work to a MIDI file and then import that MIDI file into your notation software. Now, I know many of you watching this will be ahead of me and screaming at the screen and saying it isn't as easy as it sounds. So in this video, I want to look at converting that MIDI data into a playable score that hopefully musicians may then be able to play. But before I go any further, once again, can I say a big thank you to all subscribers. Please do subscribe if you haven't done so already, so you can be alerted when other videos are uploaded. And please do continue to keep asking me any questions, either here on YouTube in the comments box, or feel free to email me directly at musicdirectoronline at gmail.com. Many, many years ago thinking about it, and perhaps before MIDI data was fully understood, I received a call from a friend of mine who had just been asked to take over to become music director for a theatre production. And he only had less than a week before opening night when he received this call. What had happened was that the previous director had used MIDI files during rehearsals, assuming that they could just then be printed out and the band could play it. Oh ho ho, if only. So then, back to my project. What I thought I'd do is to take a simple orchestrated piece and convert it into a MIDI file and import it into Dorico. That's my notation software. Sibelius and Finale, I'm sure, will act in exactly the same way. Take a look at what happened. OK, then. Now, I'm going to attempt to export a MIDI file, a MIDI file, in two or three different ways into a notation program. Now, in these videos, I normally plan ahead um, so I know exactly, or I think I know what's exactly going to happen. This time I haven't, so I'm just doing it on the hoof um, and I think I know what's going to happen. So, um, I have this relatively straightforward piece here in, in Cubase. I'm saying relatively straightforward because there's only five instruments used. A violin one, violin two, a viola and a cello. So a string quartet and then just gently underneath there's a harpsichord playing some chords. Um, very minuet, it's written in a 3-4 time. Um, let me just play a little bit of it just to give you a flavour of what we're trying to uh, reproduce then in a notation programme. So you see, quite straightforward, quite simplistic. There's no complicated triplets. Um, the shortest note is a quaver or an eighth note. And then I think a little bit later on, it starts using those quavers. Here we go. And you'll notice those articulations. There's quite a little bit of staccato in there. One thing I need to point out is that there is no easy way, first of all, of exporting MIDI like this into a notation program and it going to be perfect first off. OK, so we will go to um, File, we'll go to Export, Export, MIDI File. We'll call it on 
uh, untitled, I don't need to title it, and stick it on my desktop. There's one already there. Um, as far as the export options are concerned, they will be different in each door. Um, I like to wipe them all. I don't want to export any markers or sensor inserts. I don't want to export any automation um, because you know any notation software is not going to do anything with that kind of information anyway. So we'll just go as we are. There we are. Bump. Okay, let me just close that down now and let me open up in notation software. And again, I'm not going to change any of the settings uh, in the import options um, in Dorico in this instance. Um, but you can bet your bottom dollar that Sibelius will work in exactly the same way anyway. So let's just import that. Right, here we go. Now, let me just enlarge that a little so we can see what we're doing. And we'll stick it into gallery mode. It's just easier to read. Yeah, look at that mess. And this is the sort of thing um, that sometimes as a as a musician I am presented with when I need to play in a band because people have just exported MIDI and expect it to come out correct. I mean, you, you wouldn't give that to anyone, would you? But having said that, the way it looks on the page may be fine. It will play, I'm sure it's going to play relatively okay. Let's just play that directly out of... Yeah. Although the instruments have changed a little bit in as far as that harpsichord is not a harpsichord. So let's see if I can just quickly change that. Um, because Dorico uses Halion Sonic SE. So let's change that to a harpsichord. Oh, there's one. Okay. Now it should sound a little bit more like what we're expecting, I'm sure. You get the idea. Right. Um, so you can't really um, send that to um, um, players, um, certainly not string players uh, or any player. So you can't really send that to any player. You could spend hours now tidying this up, but there's a few more things that you can do to make your life much easier. OK, let's just close that. We won't save it, but we'll go back to our Cubase file. Now, you will notice if we look at, let's take um, some of this um, MIDI information and enlarge it up, and you will notice that none of these are up to the beat. And of course, that's what they need to be, because what you just saw in, in Dorico was all the rests and all the short notes, exactly how it was played. Um, and so the advice is usually to quantize the hell out of it. So that's what I'm going to do. I know that the shortest note in this piece is a quaver or an eighth note. Um, and so I've set up here um, an eighth note to quantize to. And there we go. Now, if we look a little bit closer at that MIDI data, we'll see that everything is lined up. OK. So you'd think that would be much better. Right, what we'll do now is we'll export it again. That to export as a MIDI file. Yeah, untitled, replace the previous one. No export options. We then open up the MIDI file in Dorico. And this time what we get I open that up is well it doesn't seem to have changed a great lot a great deal well what's changed well I don't think a great deal has changed at all um, other than everything seems to be on the bar line does it play any better let's have a look <laughs> Oh, 
film, yeah, okay, it's played a little bit better, but again, it's got lots of rest because it's trying to re uh, replicate all the articulations that were used in, um, in the Cubase file. So that's still not much good either. So let's not save that either. Go back to our Cubase file and this time we'll take that and we're going to use a function which I believe is in um, all doors. Um, if we go to our MIDI option here and we go to functions, you will notice here there is a legato function. And I believe that it's used primarily for string work so that it's going to fill out. So if you watch down here now some of this data, in fact, let me just enlarge it for you. If you watch that data now when I activate that legato function bump now it's going to fill out the full bow so all those um all those uh, rests should have disappeared so we'll go back now to export export uh, oops export as a midi file yeah untitled again replace the previous one no export options close that open the untitled midi file in Dorico, and now what do we have? Aha! This is looking much neater. Back into gallery view. Now that makes more sense, um, certainly to a musician. I'm not saying you should present it like that because there's still going to be a fair few errors. We could tidy it up by, first of all, removing those first five bars which have no purpose whatsoever um, I know because I wrote this that it's in the key of G major so um, at the beginning of the piece let's stick key signature in um, but let's just see how it plays shall we <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of played okay, but all those articulations have disappeared and that's what you will have to then add in to, um, before presenting any parts to any players. Um, that is a relatively straightforward piece. If we were take, to take uh, an orchestral work, you need to be very mindful of how much, first of all, to quantize it. You need to be very mindful of using legato functions and it may be best to export each section of the orchestra separately and then um, um, start tidying up the score that's produced. Uh, but for future videos, I want to take much more of a complicated piece and be able to demonstrate um, on screen exactly what I'm writing at any one time. Um, so um, don't just take a MIDI file and expect it to look correct on the page. Um, quantize to the um, highest denominator that you know is used in there. Be very careful of using triplets because that can play havoc with notation software um, and use the legato function whenever you can. Of course you would only need to go through this if you're lucky enough to have real players perform your work. But that was quite a simple piece of music. What happens when you do exactly the same, but for a more complicated piece involving the full orchestra? Well, in the next video, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to take this music, if you want to take a listen to it in advance, and I'm going to try and get it to look something like playable when exported. Wish me luck. See you next time.